Hey guys, Chris from Purple Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're going to be doing an amplifier and subwoofer in this Chrysler 200. Now, in this video, we're going to be integrating this amp and sub to the factory audio sound system. Let's get started. Now here at the bench, some of the parts that we're going to need for our install, first and foremost is the amplifier that we're going to go with. It's this um, older Alpine V-Power single channel amp. Um, this is the MRP M500, does 500 watts RMS at 2 ohms. Um, we can link this newer version of this amp in the description of the video in case you want to pick one up yourself. Now to wire this into the vehicle, we do need an amplifier wiring kit. This amplifier calls for an 8 gauge kit. Now we have this new Concepts CCA 8 gauge kit. You can also do OFC if you like. Um, we can also link this down in the description. This kit comes with power, ground, RCAs, remote turn on wire, um, speaker wire, fuse holder, and accessories. Now the factory integration piece, because we don't have an aftermarket radio, we'll need some sort of converter. Now it does so happen that this amp can take a speaker level signal input on the side of the amp here, but this amp is old and it's probably been lost over the many owners over the years. And so since we don't have the high input harness for this, we do need a lineout converter. Now we have this lineout converter. It's a Metro lineout converter. It also supplies a remote turn on wire output. So we're gonna get this hooked up here today. Now, if you don't have one of those, we can link our favorite one down in the description. It's this um, Pack Audio LP7-2. It basically provides that remote output so you can trigger your amp to turn on with the factory audio sound system. Now, obviously not pictured here is the sub that the customer wants us to install. It's this 12 inch Harmony Audio. Um, ported sub loaded enclosure and we can link everything that we're using today down in the description of the video so the first thing that we need to do is grab our power wire pop the hood find the battery and run this power wire through an inline fuse from that battery area through the firewall into the trunk itself now up underneath the hood here we have our battery um, it's on the driver's side um, bigger models like the 300 um, or the Charger or the Challenger, uh, commonly you find the battery in the trunk, but here on the 200, it is indeed underneath the hood. Now there was previously an amplifier kit mounted, but this is um, pretty cheap and expensive wiring. And what we're gonna do is pull this all out and put some nicer quality gauge wire in there. We'll build a fuse mount to hold our fuse holder and we'll run all the wiring underneath the factory panel. We went ahead and prepped our trunk here. We still got to pull wiring, pull the old ground off. Um, our 200 has factory 6x9s in the rear deck. Uh, we don't have the upgraded premium sound system in this. So these are basically what we're going to tap into for our speaker signal. Now we'll tap into left and right because they are right here and available. That's where we're going to connect our line out converter. All right, underneath the steering column here, we have our factory grommet. Pull this on down for you. Now, there was already an amplifier wiring kit run through here, so that's what's already pulled apart. But basically, we're using that grommet. Now, you want to be extremely careful of any of the factory wiring. But basically, we have our uh, metal hanger pass through that rubber grommet very carefully, and it came out the other side. We're going to use this to fish our wire through the firewall into the cabin of the vehicle. Now up underneath the hood, this is where our metal hanger passed on through. We just looked down, pulled it through once we passed it through that rubber grommet. Now we have our power wire taped to it. We're going to lube it up with a lot of soap and water so it's nice and slippery. And from the inside, we're going to pull that wire through that factory grommet. Again, being extremely careful of any of the factory wiring and loom there. Um, but this will allow us to pull it through and remain a seal up and around this new wire. With this panel up and out of the way, what we did is we fed our power wire through the factory channel here, through the B pillar, continue it along, up, we fed it up underneath the seat, and it comes out there, and we're mounting our amplifier right here on the back of the seat. 
It's too big to go underneath the seat. We don't want to put it on the back of the box. So this is a good compromise here. We've got our power wire that goes up into the terminal. Now this amplifier does require speed terminals. So we got those eight gauge speed terminals installed. For our ground, our ground goes and you saw us bleed that ground. We uh, cleaned the paint really well, put a 10 millimeter uh, bolt in there with a lock washer and it's nice and clean. That area we chose is um, spot welded. You can see the spot welds there so it's nice and hefty and it should hold our ground nice and secure. So with the uh, power and ground all taken care of, next thing we need to do is talk about our line-out converter, which will take care of our RCAs, remote turn-on wire, and our speaker wire connections here in the rear 6x9 deck. All right, so we're back here at the bench. Now, let's go ahead and talk about this line-out converter. This line-out converter, similar to like the pack one, what's special about it is it has a power and ground on it for constant 12 volts and a ground as a remote out and some speaker wire. The way that you hook this up is you find power and ground. Um, you can rob it off the amplifier itself or run its own specific fuse line um, to somewhere in the vehicle. And you have these speaker wire inputs as well as this remote out. Once you connect these, what you'll do is you connect this to your left and your right signal in the vehicle. And when this senses audio over your speaker wire inputs, it's going to use this switch power to generate a remote turn on and this will turn on as soon as it senses audio or DC offset over the factory speaker wiring. This then connects to your remote in on your amplifier thus triggering the aftermarket amplifier to turn on when the rest of the audio sound system boots up. So this is really nice you don't have to track down a remote turn on wire in any, anywhere in the vehicle as this one will generate one for you as soon as it sees audio over those speaker wire inputs. Now, of course, like we said, we need power and ground. We're gonna extend these and rob them off the uh, amplifier terminals. And then this will also go to the amplifier just to the remote input. These wires will connect to our factory six by nines in the rear deck, which we showed you previously. So all these will need to be extended a little bit longer. We're gonna be soldering onto these connections, covering them in heat shrink, and then we'll lube the harness with some Tessa tape. Okay, so we've prepped our line-out converter, got everything soldered up, used some heat shrink, and that's all done. So this end will have the RCA outputs that'll go to the amplifier. We have here our yellow, black, and blue that we extended. We put spade terminals because that's what our amplifier takes. And then for the two speaker wires, we just extended them. So left side's going to be our whites, right side's going to be our grays, and so this longer one it's going to go to the right side speaker. This is going to be to the left side speaker. And we're going to solder onto those leads um, up underneath. So we'll show you what that looks like in a minute. So that's done. Let's plug in our RCAs, get everything zip tied, and let's go get this guy installed. All right, so with the power and ground all hooked up, we went ahead and connected the positive terminal there on the battery. We're done at this point underneath the hood. Started reassembling all our panels here. Everything's back together. Same thing down here. Started buttoning up the amplifier and getting it all cleaned up. So for our line out converter, we're gonna tap into the left and the right channel. And we pull this on down. We're gonna install that line out converter right there. So we just zip tied it to that factory loom back in there. We have a ton of extra speak RCA wire, so we were just gonna tuck that back there. But you saw how we wire that up on the bench. And here is our two speaker wires that come out of that line-out converter. So we got this guy here, and then what we did is we loomed and ran the other one over. We're gonna connect in this guy over here as well. Now, on your right side, your positive is gonna be kind of this green. Your negative is gonna be this orange here. And what we did is we just soldered onto that connection. We'll re-loom that up as soon as we're done here. And then on your driver's side, you're both kind of green, but your positive has this tan stripe, and your negative doesn't. So that is your positive and your negative. Again, we're gonna tape these up. Everything's soldered there. We're gonna tape them up, and reloom the harness back and test the tape, and plug it back into the speaker. All right, so we got everything zip tied and cleaned up here. All back in, got our box in here. Got our sub in. We're running about 500 watts at two ohms here. 
Got everything cleaned up. All our wiring is all zip tied. We just set our gains with an SMD DD1 to the factory radio. And we are good to go. Now this thing sounds great. If you want to see anything that we installed within this video, again, like we said before, we'll link it all down in the description here for you. Um, be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw, and don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time, and we'll see you in the next video.